Hello, my name is Alex Slade. I'm one of the radiation oncologists at Stony Brook Cancer Center. Um, I primarily specialize in prostate and other genitourinary cancers, and it's my pleasure to be with you here today. Um, so let's start out with what is radiation therapy? So radiation therapy typically, though not exclusively, uses x-rays to target and kill cancer cells. Radiation has been around a long time. So Wilhelm Röntgen is credited with discovering x-rays in 1895, and Madame Curie was awarded the Nobel Prize for discovering radium and polonium in 1911. So in the context of prostate cancer, radiation therapy, along with radical prostatectomy, comprise the two standard treatment options for the definitive treatment of prostate cancer. Radiation therapy can be given by itself or can be combined with other systemic therapies like androgen deprivation therapy. It can also be given after a prostatectomy in certain cases if there are higher risk features or if the PSA were to rise after surgery. So radiation is delivered in two primary ways. One is called external beam radiation therapy, which is radiation delivered from a machine from the outside directed inward into the pelvis. The other way is internal radiation, where radiation is inserted from the inside and then directed outward, and this is called brachytherapy. So the most common form of radiation therapy for prostate cancer is called external beam radiation therapy. And what this uses is what's called a linear accelerator. Uh, this is a, uh, a diagram of the varian edge, which we have in our department at Stony Brook. And essentially what this does is it uses very high speed electrons to generate high energy x-rays uh, to both target and kill these pro prostate cancer cells. Um, over time, the, we've gotten more sophisticated in how we've been able to use the linear accelerator to do just that. As you can see in this figure, the original planning technique of 2D radiation therapy delivered treatment to the prostate, but also covered a lot of radiation to the bladder and the rectum. Over time, our treatment techniques have advanced. Typically, we use rapid arc or volumetric modulated arc therapy, which is able to deliver radiation very tightly around the prostate while trying to minimize dose to surrounding organs such as the bladder and the rectum. Um, historically, radiation what was, uh, was conventionally fractionated, meaning divided up over time. So um, historically, radiation was delivered over about two months, every day, Monday to Friday, skip the weekends. Um, each treatment typically takes 15 to 20 minutes. Um, over time, we've studied how radiation can be delivered um, in terms of dividing up that radiation um, over, over time so that in many patients, radiation can be delivered with higher daily doses of radiation, which can shorten the treatment course to between four and six weeks. Um, in select patients, the daily radiation dose can be even higher, closer um, to seven or eight gray, which is a dose of radiation, bringing down the total treatment time to one to two weeks. One of the um, modalities that, have, that has gained a lot of traction in the past few years is something known as stereotactic body radiation therapy, um, which has now become a standard treatment for many men with prostate cancer. Um, nearly 40 prospective studies um, have included about 6,000 patients um, have reported excellent outcomes with biochemical free survival, meaning control of PSA, over a long period of time exceeding 90% for the patients that were studied in these series. The patient reported outcomes for stereotactic body radiation therapy have been excellent with urinary and bowel scores um, be being very, very um, optimal and also sexual epic scores, meaning uh, patient reported sexual function um, has declined but rel at a relatively modest rate um, after radiation therapy. Um, so who are good candidates for this kind of therapy? So typically patients with low or favorable intermediate risk disease, um, patients with good urinary function, and patients who are able to tolerate an MRI. Some issues that make this type of therapy more difficult is if they have a large prostate, especially if it protrudes into the bladder, if they have hip implants, which can obscure the imaging somewhat, and then patients who have difficulty tolerating an MRI. So what's the typical prostate cancer radiation course that one might expect if they were to come to Stony Brook. Um, so you'd 
first um, have an initial consultation with one of the radiation oncologists. Um, if we determine that external beam radiation therapy is a good treatment option for you, we would start typically with doing spaceor and fiducial marker seed placement, which I'll discuss in a minute. Um, that will be followed by a simulation CT scan and possibly an additional MRI of the prostate. And then a couple of weeks after, you would start treatment. So space or and fiducial marker seed. So this is a technique that we do to both help the imaging of the prostate as well as to protect the rectum. So the space or gel is a pro product that's made by Boston Scientific uh, that is inserted in between the prostate and the rectum. And as you can see, before the space or is placed, we have to design the radiation beam, which is kind of in this light red color around the prostate. After the insertion of the space or gel, it pushes the prostate up away from the rectum and is able to spare the rectum the full dose of radiation that would typically be required to cover the prostate. We also use gold fiducial marker seeds, which are small, um, small pieces of gold, smaller than a grain of rice, um, that is used to help guide our imaging to identify the prostate when a patient is getting external beam radiation. So in this, in this picture, you can see the space ore, which is in white, uh, the prostate on top of it with gold marker seeds in it. And that's kind of the ideal um, setup for, for patients undergoing external beam treatment. So um, in conventionally fractionated or hypofractionated, less treatment times, uh, radiation, the typical treatment course is four to nine weeks, Monday to Friday, skip the weekends. Um, if you're getting the stereotactic radiation treatment, the treatments are only five. There's only five total treatments. Um, the beam on time, so the radiation beam is only on for three to five minutes, but we allow extra time for setup. Um, often, patients are in and out of the department within 20 to 30 minutes, and you see the physician once a week. What are the common side effects of radiation? Um, commonly, patients will report fatigue. So typically it's not an overwhelming fatigue, but more of an annoying type of fatigue. Um, urinary side effects, such as urinary bother, erectile dysfunction, as well as rectal side effects, although this is becoming increasingly rare, especially with the use of the space or device. Another form of radiation therapy that was talked about at the very beginning is internal radiation therapy or brachytherapy. Um, there's two types of brachytherapy. Um, one is called low-dose rate brachytherapy, which uses permanent seeds that are inserted into the prostate. At Stony Brook, we offer a technique called high-dose rate brachytherapy. Uh, high-dose rate brachytherapy uses temporary high-activity seeds to deliver very high dose of radiation to the prostate. So it can be delivered as a sole modality therapy, as the only treatment for prostate cancer. Typically, this is two treatment sessions about two weeks apart. It can be also done as a boost in combination with external beam treatments. Um, so in this scenario, we would give a very high dose of boost radiation using the internal HDR brachytherapy, place space or infiducials during that treatment session, and then follow up with additional external beam radiation on the back end. Brachytherapy is done under general anesthesi anesthesia and typically lasts between three and four hours. So the technique essentially involves, under anesthesia, um, inserting a probe into the rectum and inserting temporary catheters into the prostate. After the catheters are inserted, a machine called an afterloader delivers a very high activity source that dwells in the prostate. The source is then removed from the prostate. After that's done, the catheters are removed, the patient is awoken, um, and they leave with all the radiation delivered, no residual radiation, and all the catheters are um, taken out. So this is what a brachytherapy implant looks like in terms of the radiation given. As you can see, this implies a very, very high amount of radiation that's delivered to the prostate and very little radiation that's delivered outside of the prostate. Um, brachytherapy has been studied um, in the context of patients receiving either just external radiation or a combination of external and internal radiation. And what they found is, and what some studies have found, is that the, uh, the outcomes, meaning the, the control of PSA, is considerably better among patients 
who received a combination of both internal and external radiation compared to patients who just received external radiation. And this is especially true in patients with intermediate and higher risk disease. Um, the other application of brachytherapy is, is used as a salvage modality. So in patients who have previously received radiation to the prostate and the cancer grows back within the prostate, brachytherapy can be used potentially um, to kill those remaining cells that were left in the prostate after radiation is completed. Thank you so much for your time. And if you have any questions, feel free to submit them to the email listed on this slide.